Good evening. Praise the Lord. And welcome to the Wednesday night Bible study here at Grace Gospel Service on JBLM at the Northport Chapel. It is uh, a pleasure to be here tonight uh, to stand before you um, and study God's word. Amen. Amen. Let us start with a, a word of prayer. Father God, we come before you. We thank you because you're God Almighty. And we ask that you dwell among us and that you teach us, Father God. Um, open up our eyes, our hearts, and our minds as we study your word, Father God. We ask that you um, implant it into our hearts and into our minds so that we can use it in our day-to-day -day life. And let us be fishers of men, uh, Father God. Let us tell someone of your goodness. Let us tell someone of your grace. Let us tell someone of your mercy. We ask you for these blessings and more in Jesus' name. We pray amen, amen, and amen. God bless you again, and um, welcome. Uh, I'd like to start with a uh, review of what we were studying on last week. And uh, Jesus began his second year of ministry, and he invited... Uh, four fishermen uh, to follow him and so that was uh, the gist of our our study on last week and to, um, to this week we'll go into the the healing of the paraplegic man um, and we're going to follow uh, Matthew chapter 9 verse 1 through 6 or 1 through 8, I believe, and uh, Mark chapter 2, 1 through 12, and Luke uh, chapter 5, 17 through 26. The key person, uh, of course, is Jesus uh, in, in these passages. And uh, the crowd followed him, uh, the paraplegic man, and the relig religious leaders are um, our key persons in in this scripture in this scripture text and the location is uh, in a house in Capernaum so the key repetitions is the crowd filled the house um, it was uh, noted in Mark uh, 2 and 2 uh, that the Paraplegic's friends uh, could not get into the house because uh, of the crowd. And then also in Mark uh, 2 and 4, it was noted, everyone was amazed um, and praised God at the end of this visit here in the, in the house. Uh, the religious leaders were there, uh, the Pharisees and the teachers of the law of Moses were there. Um, sin uh, is a key factor. Jesus told the paralyzed man that he was forgiven of sin. And he proved to the religious leaders that he had authority. They didn't think he had the authority to do that. And they thought that uh, he was blaspheming at the time. Um, but Jesus told them that he was the son of man and that he had the authority uh, to, to heal and we'll go we'll dive into that and then praising God after the healing uh, of the paralyzed man Jesus told him to go home and uh, everyone was amazed of what uh, happened and praised God uh, the key attitudes the crowd um, was curious and they wanted to see Jesus the religious leaders were skeptic uh, toward him. And the, politic, uh, the, the paralyzed man's friends, um, they were determined to take him to Jesus. And because of their faith uh, in Jesus, they, they knew Jesus could heal them. Uh, there was conflict between Jesus and the religious leaders and Jesus convinced, Jesus' confidence uh, when he confronted the religious leaders uh, 
uh, he showed them. Um, he wasn't afraid. He had confidence in who he was. And a praise of the cure of the paraplegic man uh, came from the, cl uh, the crowd of folks after, after the healing happened. So the initial situation was in the beginning of the second year of Jesus' public ministry. Uh, John the Baptist uh, was now in prison, and Jesus was expelled from Nazareth. He moved to Capernaum near the Lake of Galilee. So this is uh, the backdrop of, of the scene where we are now. And Jesus invited four fishermen uh, to follow him. Jesus had already performed several healings, uh, several miracles at this time. So what's the initial problem in this text? Jesus returned to Capernaum, and the people filled the house where Jesus was teaching. But the final situation is that everyone in the house was amazed, and they praised God. So let's get into the text. If someone will read, who has Matthew's uh, 9, 1? If you will read Matthew 9, 1 through 8, please. Can someone give her a mic? Jesus got into the boat and went back across the lake to his own town. Some people thought brought to Jesus a man who was paralyzed and lying on a mat. When Jesus saw the face of these people, he said to the paralyzed man, Be encouraged, young man. Your sins are forgiven. Some of the teachers of the law said to themselves, this man speaks as if he was God. That is blasphemy. Knowing their thoughts, Jesus said, why are, just a minute, okay. why are you thinking evil thoughts? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven, or to tell him, stand, stand up and walk. But I will prove to you that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sin. How much, how far am I to read? Verse 8. Uh, verse 8. Yes, okay. please. Amen. Um, I lost myself. Then Jesus said to the paralyzed man, stand up, take your mat, and go home. And the man stood up and went home. When the people saw this, they were amazed and praised God for giving power like this to a human being. Amen. Amen. So here we see Jesus um, healing the sick man, but we also see the faith of his friends. His, his friends were determined to get him, uh, the man with palsy, close. They were determined to, to get close to Jesus for the healing. And... Jesus forgave the man of the sins because of the faith of his friends. Um, and then it tells us that uh, the evil thoughts, so the mind of man and the hearts of man was read by Jesus. He could see through uh, the Pharisees. He could see uh, and and know what they were thinking, so he spoke to that. Uh, it's just good that he's all-knowing, that our God is all-knowing, 
Uh, so he knew the situation around him and he told them of their evil thoughts. And he also demonstrated um, his knowledge and that he was God even here on earth and that he could forgive sin and he could heal and that it wasn't blasphemy as they, as they thought it was or as, as, as they were thinking. He showed his power, he showed his authority, he showed that he was in charge. Amen. Amen. Mark 2, uh, verse 1 through 8, I believe, if someone can read that. Go ahead. He needs a mic, please. Mark 2, 1 through 12. Mark 2, verse 1, King James Version. And again, he entered into Capernaum after some days. And it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway they were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was, and when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the posse laid. Verse 5. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the posse, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why do this man thus speak blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived preserved in the spirit that they so reason with themselves. He said unto them, while reason ye these things in your hearts, whether it, whether it, is it easier to say the sick of the apostles, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say arise and take up thy bed and walk, but that ye may know that the son of man hath power on the earth to forgive sins. He said to the sick of the apostles, I say unto thee, arise and take up thy bed and go thy way into thy house. And immediately he arose, took up the bed and went forth before them all. And so much that they were all amazed and glorified God saying, we would, we would never saw it on this fashion. Amen. Amen. So why were the Pharisees and the teachers there? What do you think? their purpose was? Were they followers of Jesus? Were they, um, what was the purpose for the Pharisees and uh, the teachers of Moses' law? Why were they there in the house with the crowd? Uh, because uh, they were taught the law the Ju Jude Judean law of the religious establishment. They were very versed. They were learned men, Pharisees. And they, they were there to um, condemn and put a uh, ice bag on anything Jesus said. Amen. Amen. So they weren't uh, followers. They were there to condemn. They were there to seek um, any way um, that they could maim or rattle Jesus. Uh, that's what their purpose was. And uh, even though they knew the law and they were learned, they did not uh, recognize who Jesus was. Uh, they did not want to believe that uh, Jesus was the son of God. Um, there, the Pharisees uh, taught the law to themselves and uh, they spoke of Jesus' blasphemy talk, but 
they said that only God could forgive sin, and yet they were speaking to God. And again, that uh, their lack of their knowledge, even though they were learned men, they didn't realize who they were speaking to. Uh, they said only God can forgive sin and God alone. Um, so Jesus had to tell them uh, that he was the son of man, that he was God, the son of man, and that he could do here on earth, um, he could heal. Um, let's read the next verse that is in Luke. Who has that? Uh, chapter 5. 17 through 26, please. 17 through 26, Luke, King James Version, verse 17. And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. And behold, men brought in a in a bed, a man which was taken with a palsy, and they sought means to bring him in and to lay him before him. And when they could not find by what way they might bring him in because of the multitude, they went upon the housetop and led him down through the tiling which with his couch into the midst before Jesus. And when he saw their faith, he said unto, unto him, Man, thy sins are forgiven thee. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemy? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answering said unto them, What reason ye in your hearts, whether it is e whether it's easier to say, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Rise up and walk, but that but that he may know that the Son of Man has power upon earth to forgive sins, he said unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up that couch, and go into thine house. And immediately he rose before them, and took up that whereon he lay, and departed on his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed, and glorified God, and were filled with fear, saying, we have seen strange things today. Amen. Praise God. They had seen strange things. They saw miracles. Um, they saw things that they didn't understand, but they glorified God. They praised God for what they saw. Uh, so their eyes were open up. Their minds were open. And uh, Jesus showed his power. He showed, again, his authority. And... Uh, also obedience came into place. So we spoke of, of faith earlier, the faith of the friends, but also obedience. When God told the man to get up, to take up his couch, to take up his bed and walk. Uh, if it, Let's put ourselves in, in his place, in his shoes. If you'd had this disease... Uh, your body would be weak. You, you couldn't walk. You couldn't get up. You couldn't sit up. They said the description was that he was laying uh, on his couch and that his friends uh, lowered him from the top of the house, from the rooftop, into the house uh, near Jesus. So I'm imagining if he could even sit up at all, was, did he have that much strength? So here's a man that is so weak um, that he can't move himself around. He wasn't mobile at all. Um, he had to have someone to help him. And Jesus tells him to get up and walk, to take up your mat. What was he thinking? What was he thinking about Jesus? Was he thinking about his own abilities? Did he trust God? Did he wonder if his muscles and his mind were still connected? Or did he just respond? I, I think it didn't say he was um, 
responsive at all. He said it's paraplegic and he couldn't move because if he's paralyzed, he's just laying there. But I want, I think this was a picture that Jesus was painting for us uh, that is not, it, it don't have to be my faith. When I was, had surgery four years ago, I was completely out of it. It was all of you praying for me. I, and when I, <laughs> when I came to myself, I couldn't even repeat the verses that I had learned as a child. I couldn't even repeat the Lord's Prayer. But I, people were praying for me. And so this, I have experienced this in my life that the prayers of the saints gets you through because you are completely out of it. You, 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 there, there's no you there. And it hurt me that I couldn't repeat the Lord's Prayer. I couldn't repeat the verses that I had learned all through my life. Mm -hmm. And it took a while for it to come back. And I, I, I can see this man paralyzed, maybe just completely helpless, but Jesus said it's because of the faith of those that brought him. Mm -hmm. And that's a picture for us. Amen. Yes, Mother. Wait for the mic, please. Mother Brown, can you wait for the mic? Excuse Thank me. you. The Thank man, you so much. he was in the spirit with God. Even though like we are, when we are ill, uh, had surgery or something, and that, like the sister just spoke, that we can't to repeat something, our believers and friends pray for us. And since he and God had the connection, he was able yes. to do. And God raised him by speaking to him. And then the power, he was in power by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Praise God for the healing power. As the sister said, it took his friends because when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, son, thy sins be forgiven. So it was the faith. It's very important for us to have that faith and trust and pray, pray over each and one of us because that's why we are one when we are in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's very important that it took the man's, his friends, and their faith to lift him up and take him into the house that was crowded. And he was able to be healed and his sins was forgiven. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Um, so intercessory prayer uh, is, is powerful, and I think that's a note to us as well, that we can intercede on others' behalf, and we can pray for one another. Um, and so we should act on that. If, if a, someone we know uh, crosses our mind, um, we should whisper a prayer. We should cover them in prayer. Um, and then reach out to them. And, and it should be to no surprise that the very moment that you whispered that prayer, um, God answered that prayer or God protected or covered them, um, that God helped, helped that person get through whatever situation they found themselves in. Um, it, is, it is good to have uh, intercessors. It is good to have prayer warriors in your life so that when we're not able to pray for ourselves, when we are not in the, in the right mindset to pray, uh, if, if it's just caused by our life situation, if it's caused by um, a surgery, whatever it's caused by, if we have someone covering us and interceding, uh, it is a great thing. It is, it is wonderful to have. And to let's keep each other covered. That's why uh, we come come to church and we come to Bible study to to learn how to do that, uh, to keep each other uh, covered. Um, let's talk about the forgiveness of sin. Uh, Jesus did not 
questioned the man about his sin. Um, he just forgave him of his sin. And he does that for us, just for the asking. If we repent, the word says that um, our sins are cast into the sea of forgetfulness as far as the east is from the west. So I'm not thinking as far as the east is from the west here on earth. I'm thinking universal east from the west. That's how far it is, is cast and we're forgiven. And then our trouble is, is that we ask for forgiveness, we're forgiven, but we still carry that burden. We don't leave it there. We take it back. We take it back. And uh, so we should uh, lay our petitions at the feet uh, of Jesus and, and leave them there and leave them there. But uh, Satan will have us to think we're not worthy of forgiveness and would have us to think uh, that we should carry that load. But uh, we don't have to. We don't have to. Um, that's why we have our Lord and Savior Jesus. He's, he's paid our sin debt. And uh, we're set free. We have the victory. We have the victory. So um, I wanted to talk about how quick the, the sin of the paralyzed man was forgiven. And uh, who can you identify um, in the, with in this passage of scripture? Can you identify with the crowd? Can you identify with the paralyzed man? Uh, we kind of went into detail about how he may have felt. Uh, can you identify with the four friends? Uh, can you identify with the religious leaders at that time? Or what about the homeowner who invited Jesus into his house and um, had the rooftop uh, possibly torn up or uh, destroyed somewhat uh, with all the people there? Can, can you imagine... Um, there's a party and all the leftover cups and plates and food and chicken wings and bones. Can you imagine? Was it like that? Um, did they have food? Uh, did they uh, leave the house in a disarray? Or did they give the man his house back the way they found it? And so obviously they didn't because they put the man down through the roof. We don't know. It could have been... Um, a way to come down through the attic through the roof but um, can you can you identify with the man that had all those folks in his house who can you identify with anyone I think um, this man's ailment was a direct reflection of what was going on with him spiritually you know so you you gotta think like when when we was out there in the world and we were spiritually dead and God quickened us and made us alive again, you know what I mean? <clears throat> and this is what happens with this paralyzed man. So, you know, before, before Jesus dealt with his paralysis in the natural, he had to deal with his spiritual paralysis. So he forgives his sin, quickens him, makes him alive again spiritually. Mm -hmm. Then he heals him and gives him the ability to walk again. So now his spirit and his, um, his body is in alignment with one another again, and now he can go into life, you know. So you got to think about as well, too, the power of um, God's words, you know what I mean? So when God says something, things happen. Yes. So it, it didn't, it, it wasn't about really him getting up as far as his response as it was when Jesus commanded him to get up. He moved because he was, he was obeying the word of God, you know what I mean? Yes. So. Amen. I'll Amen. just leave it at that because I can go kind of a little bit. Amen. Long, so. That's all right. That's all right. Very good. So consider being spiritually paralyzed. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And uh, what about the four friends? What about our friends? Are they dependable? Are, are they uh, concerned with our well-being, our mental, physical um, spiritual well-being and then um, let's kind of turn that to self what kind of friend are we are we concerned about others are we concerned about their well-being do we 
Are we blessed to bless someone else? Or, or are we a selfish kind of friend? Are we dependable? Do we say and do what we say we're going to do uh, when it comes to others? Um, and so these seem like some pretty good friends uh, that wouldn't take no for an answer and were determined uh, to uh, get their friends uh, mobile and, and get his healing. Any other comments about the friends? Can you put yourself in the four men's place? Yes. It's not so much that I can put myself in their place, but the, to me, those four friends, they were determined. Mm -hmm. They couldn't get through the crowd, and I imagine it was a pretty good crowd. They were so determined that they got him up on the roof of somebody's house yeah. and brought him down to the ground to Jesus. They were going to get him to Jesus. Yeah. I don't know what they had heard prior to that, but they knew that they needed to get him to Jesus. Amen. 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 Any others? Let's, let's speak. As a sister said, the determination, as in the friends, as in us, because we should all be as in brothers and sisters to one another. Like yeah. they was, they was determined to bring him. They knew that he needed Jesus. So every day that we live and we walk out into the world, before we even say anything or judge anything, we should say a prayer because we know that they need Jesus. And by our faith, that person can come and be healed and be touched by the Father and the Son. Amen. Praise God. Uh, the religious leaders, um, let us uh, just imagine uh, their position, learned um, men knowing the law and then again, bringing it to home today, our, our leaders, learned men and women, um, <laughs> I didn't say spiritual leaders, <laughs> I just said leaders. And uh, so I, I, I'm, thinking, I'm thinking of the leaders of the United States. I'm thinking of the leaders of our military. I'm thinking of uh, the leaders, government leaders. Um, and with, with um, education, with diplomas, but does that give them um, the understanding of who God is? Does it automatically come along uh, with that? And so sometimes we think we're in a position and we're all knowing, but we're lacking because we don't have God in our lives. We're lacking uh, because we don't seek God first in all that we do. And so you, you may be learned, and this is a prime example, you may have a lot of education, but if God is not in your life, uh, then you're, you're ignorant to a lot of things, you're naive, and, and you're lost, and you're lost. And so we don't want to uh, find ourselves uh, in, in this world and in worldly things. We want to find ourselves close to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We want to be saved, and we want to know that we are saved. And uh, these, these learned men did not know. Mother. Just because you have knowledge doesn't equate to the relationship you have with God, mm -hmm. with Jesus, and, and the connection of your spirit with God's spirit. You may have all the knowledge uh, that one would seek you out and you got professors in these uh, seminaries that are atheists and they teach a good class, mm -hmm. but what you're going to do with it 
is what the Holy Spirit deals with you with and brings you into the, a fuller knowledge of what this word is saying. And even in my quiet times in the morning, mm -hmm. I could read over something that I'm so familiar with. That's the, that's the bad thing. We get so familiar with the word of God that it becomes commonplace. And then he speak, he takes the blinders off my eyes. And I say, oh my goodness, is this what you're saying to here? You know, when he get ready, when he get ready to show you, that's what he does. Amen. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir, go ahead. You know, the thing that I see that Jesus did was that he encouraged the man first before he told him to get up. Yes, he did. Good point. You know, because you can be paralyzed even walking. What I mean by that, you can be in your own mess and trapped so much, so deep in sin that you, you don't know which way to go. You can't breathe. You can't mm -hmm. function right. Yeah. But the thing that I saw most of all is that Jesus wasn't so much concerned about the sins that he had committed. It's just that he told the man to have courage. Yes. And once he told him to have the courage, he told him that your sins are forgiven, then told him to get up and walk. In other words, he lifted him first mm -hmm. because he knew what he needed. He needed that love. He needed to feel that. And that's probably something that he hadn't felt in a long time, even in himself. Because I, can, I can't imagine, I don't know if the man was born that way or he became that way because some people feel like when they're in sin so much, they don't feel like they don't deserve to be forgiven. They don't feel like they're one of God's children. Mm -hmm. So it took, it took Jesus to, he had, he had to see something in this man to be able to tell this man to have courage. Yes. Because this man was probably spiritually bankrupt. He probably mm -hmm. felt helpless and hopeless. Yeah. You know, probably felt like he didn't have no way out. But by Jesus telling him this and the friends encouraging him, when he gave the commandment to move, he moved. He moved. That's what Amen. I Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, faith in action, I think, is where uh, we were leading to with that thought that faith and action goes hand in hand. And if you just have that mustard seed of faith, then um, if God commands you to do something, you're able to do it. Faith in action. Um, Amen. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Yes, ma'am. And since you spoke about the uh, educational status, uh, yes, our high authorities that God has blessed them to be. And he gives them the authority and he gives us power to continue to lift them up where they think that they know it all, but the education is not what it's all about. It's do you know the almighty God who is over you. And just now, as we have our new president, let's think about it. He and his team is salute. They are, <clears throat> they do know God and they do expect things to happen. And they talk, you know, firm about God. Mm -hmm. But now here we are, believers, uh, we lift them up too. So we, when God empower us with the Holy Spirit, we are really lifting up our authorities and no, regardless about the education, it's all of us when we lift them up, the people that God put in charge of us because God is the first and he put them next. So then here we are praying for better things and God is listening at us and blessing them with the prayers and the blessings from us. Amen. Amen. Those that serve Jesus uh, need to use their minds. That's one of our points, one of our life lessons. And it says the friends with the para 
paraplegic man arrived to the house where Jesus was speaking, but the entrance door was blocked by people. Four men had to seek another way to get their friend uh, to Jesus. And so they had to use their mind to find another way, another interest. And uh, so let's think about that. Uh, sometimes uh, our, our pathway may not be straight, but we have to use our mind. Um, the, the elders in my family would say, figure it out. And um, it's not always easy to figure it out. But if, if they would have just given me the answer, I would never learn to figure it out. You know, in the military, they teach us problem solving. Uh, they give us those skills. And those skills stay with you for life. They stay with you for life. If you're in a, a, an area that you're not familiar with uh, or a situation, you have to use your mind to figure it out. Uh, and so it's the same way uh, with our minds uh, when we're studying the word, when we're serving Jesus, um, we, we're to seek him first in all we do. And he'll help us figure it out. He'll help. It, it's, it's, it, sometimes you can lose your glasses or lose your keys. But if you sit down and be quiet and ask God to show you where that lost item is, you can go straight to it and then it's it's funny it's stressful at first but then you laugh about it you know you, you, you laugh about uh, that you've checked everywhere and then when you sit down and be quiet and, and seek God even in something as simple as that so if we can do it with lost keys or lost glasses or we've misplaced something what about the harder things in life what about the larger things in life if we could just be quiet, know that he is God, and seek him for direction in every aspect of our life. And if we're obedient, um, he'll tell us to get up and walk. He'll, he'll, he'll remove uh, our weakness and give us strength. Amen? Amen. Anyone else? As in, um, I was going off on the brothers and the sisters. I'm reading it. It was in Second Timothy, chapter two, verse one. Though therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ. So we had that power. He told us that we had to be strong in the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses. The same commit though to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. That's another we by faith. Though therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No matter what it is in our life, we have to remember who are we are. We are a soldier of who? Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. I might be in the military. We might be in the army. We might be this, that, and the third. But we also have to put him first, seeking him first, and who we belong to and who are we fighting for and who are we doing it for. Because he, he, this is what he tells us. No, no man that war entangled himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who had chosen him to be a soldier. Yeah. So every day we're going through these things, we shouldn't entangle ourselves in this life, entangle ourselves in the problems and the situation that's going on within our mind and our heart. But we go to him by our faith, everything done by faith, by our belief. We believe in him, so we shall not perish. Amen. Praise God. My sister. Amen. So um, something that just stood out in my mind as everyone was speaking on it um, was to always remain a student. Um, and then I put, but never allow your knowledge to block what the spirit is doing or trying to show you. Mm -hmm. So it just basically was to confirm what everyone else was saying, but that just stood out and always remain a student, mm -hmm. always remain to be teachable. You don't know it all. Mm -hmm. Now, education is great. Yeah but you have to have the spirit and you have to know God. Otherwise, all that knowledge is just gonna go to waste. Yes, amen, so. amen, amen. Be open to uh, the Holy Spirit, be open to the knowledge of God, amen. Good point, good point, yes. Thanking God for the night. <laughs> as an assistant said, as a student, 
that's who we should be, keeping ourselves low and humble as their dear children. He told us to be. That's a commandment. We are the commandment. We have to be that dear children, that obedience, have to have that love. We put him first, the love that we have for him over anything. Yes. Amen. Amen. Put God first in all that we do. Um, inviting Jesus into your home can be costly. However, uh, it may enable the host uh, to witness God doing amazing things. So this host invited Jesus into his house and uh, there was a roof, uh, a hole left in his roof, but he witnessed amazing things when Jesus healed the paraplegic man. So it may be costly. He may have some uh, roof repairs later on. <laughs> You may um, have some maintenance to do, you know. And I, I like um, a lot of times um, a after we're saved, we, we go through some things. And we're being molded until after we've invited uh, Jesus into our hearts. Uh, it may be costly. It, it may cost us uh, friends. You know, it may cost us uh, things, stuff, but all things belong to God. All things belong. And if we'll just wait, if we'll just wait, we'll be in a maze what God will do in our lives. Go ahead, my sister. Amen. So you said maintenance. And so maintenance, it stood out of my mind, getting closer to, getting closer to him. And I think about when we first came to Christ, or when I, I'll make it personal, when I first came to Christ, you, you have this picture sometime that, you know, everything's just going to be perfect in your home. You think, you know, everything's going to be great, but sometimes all chaos yes. will break loose. Yes. So the chaos was this man falling through the roof. <laughs> yes, yes. But then they also um, saw amazing things and were able to experience those amazing things even after the chaos. And so that maintenance, getting closer to Jesus after the chaos, you start pulling out warfare, that prayer, that praise and worship, reading your word. So when that warfare takes place or you having stuff falling in your life, falling through the roof, God can begin to do those miraculous things because you know how to handle it. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Amen. She said things can be costly, as in things can be costly as I can, I can lose a friend, I can lose, I can lose anybody in my family, I can, I can lose a relationship that I had with somebody, but that is all to gain. Mm -hmm. Everything that he put in our lives and he healed and touched each and one of us is to gain, so some might be saved. Even ourselves, so we can, we can gain and be more closer and maintain and keep that maintenance as in that maintenance on this vessel as in the spirit that the spirit dwell in our body that we keep that maintenance and things will be costly because all things is to gain for him Amen. and profit as in we help each other it's not to okay i help my brother i help my sister okay lord what can i get it's to gain so we all can be profit so we all can gain the blessing and receive and be able to go over here and speak to those and those and those that's not even in belief. Amen. Just a little nugget. Um, salvation is costly, but on the end, the reward supersedes the cost. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Any takeaways? Good takeaway. Any takeaways from our, our study t on tonight with uh, Jesus healing the paraplegic man? Yes, sir. Can, can you imagine that, I don't know how many people seek this church, but I know it was four men who carried one. But could you imagine if, if, if everybody in here had the same amount of faith as the four here had, you wouldn't have to tear the roof off the church, you would blow it off. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Could you imagine that? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Any other takeaways? 
Any takeaways or lessons learned? And I just want to thank God again for <laughs> using brother. As in, can we imagine? Or can we be doers? Can we do that? Can we be as those mans was when they brought that friend or when they brought that, that stranger that was out there in the world into the house of the Lord? So I can just say I can imagine if, if we just truly just be bold in our faith and, and be that doer, can I just imagine how much can it, the house of the Lord as in Grace Church can be filled right now? Amen. Any others? Any other takeaways? Any other lessons learned? Um, I, I just want to say for me, um, this teaches me when you're weak, uh, you can be strong. When you're down, you're not out. When you're paralyzed, uh, you can walk again if you're in Christ Jesus. Okay. My sister. And then... My okay. sister and so a takeaway that I wanted to put emphasis on or that spoke to me is put the faith with your action or action with your faith to not just say I have faith, but to do the work and do the work is working on me and allowing God to work on me, making me better to be able to serve him and to serve his people. And so a lot of times we say we have faith, but we don't want to put any action to it. So they both go hand in hand. They go hand in hand. Amen. Amen. Just for me, two things. Um, personally, to make sure that my circle of friends are my ride and die in today's terminology. Mm -hmm. That when I'm down and out, yes. I know where my circle is. Yes. You know, <laughs> I know. I know my circle. And the other thing is that... Uh, I think everybody in here is familiar with our son, Tremaine, and that I so look forward to the day that when his tongue is loosed, when his legs that are crooked are straight in that glorious day. So I parallel this paralyzed man to him that because I know that it's, it's going to happen. Yes. No Amen. doubt. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Any others? Amen. Well, I thank God for you, those that are here, those that are um, also watching us uh, virtually. I thank God for you. I thank God for this lesson um, that we have learned on tonight, that we've gained on tonight, uh, what faith does, what faith can do, um, that we see the power of God, and uh, it's the same. It's the same as it was back then. If Jesus says it, that settles it. That's it. That's it. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we come before you. We praise you. We honor you. And we adore you, and we thank you for your word. We thank you that there's power in your word. We thank you, uh, Father God, that you've given us this lesson uh, to learn about faith, to learn about friendship, to learn about those that are in authority, Father God, to know that you're omnipresent and that you're all-knowing, that you know what we think, you know our thoughts. We thank you, Father God, for teaching us to put you first and to be obedient to you. We thank you that you're teaching us to encourage one another, Father God, and to be good friends. We thank you, Father God, for teaching us about intercessory prayer, that we can pray for one another, uh, Father God. When we don't have the mind to pray for ourselves, someone else can intercede on our behalf. And so we just thank you for that. We thank you, Father God. If we had a thousand tongues, we couldn't thank you enough. But with the one we have, we give thanks. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you and have a good night.